Starship was built with one bold goal, to take humans to the moon and Mars in this decade. But it seems impossible. The reality shows us that it has not yet achieved anything. Starting with the first flight prototype of Starship version 2, unexpected incidents have led to mid-air explosions. However, everything is about to change. Meet Ship 37, preparing for its upcoming Flight 10, will serve as a testament to the lessons learned from all their failures, especially on Raptor. So, what SpaceX engineer changed on S-37? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starship SpaceX switched to its version 2 configuration from Flight 7, but the results still remained unsatisfactory. The ships inadvertently exposed dangerous weaknesses in SpaceX's vaunted Raptor propulsion system. On Flight 7, the cause of the Starship loss was reported as harmonic response several times stronger in flight than had been seen during testing, which led to increased stress on hardware in the propulsion system. That increased pressure caused a propellant leak that couldn't fully escape from the attic, causing a fire that shut down the engine. Flight 8 also shocked us with leaked images of the Raptor engines breaking apart a few days later. They were violently torn apart, seemingly exploding before separating from the ship. Large and small pieces of debris were floating around the stern. These leaked images are the only evidence to date that gives us a full view of the moment an engine failed and left the ship. This sudden movement caused an imbalance in the spacecraft's thrust, which ultimately led to a loss of control and an explosion. This was unfortunate. SpaceX also confirmed that the loss was due to a hardware failure in one of the Raptor engines at mid-sea level, which caused an undesirable mix of fuel and oxidizer. Flight 9 recently saw a significant improvement in the spacecraft's performance compared to the previous two launches, but it ended up repeating the mistakes of the previous two. S-35 then suffered a propellant leak and lost attitude control, preventing it from achieving most of its space objectives, and had to terminate the flight by disabling the vehicle. Now all hopes are on Flight 10, which will be joined by S-37 and B-16. In fact, the flight was originally scheduled to fly with S-36, but it exploded during a static fire test at Massey due to a COPV failure. The miss isn't necessarily a bad thing, Flight 10 was delayed, taking the launch time longer than originally planned, but giving SpaceX more time to adjust from past experiences with S-37. Looking deeper into all the challenges of these launches, the most important issue is fuel leaks. Leaks occurring inside the fuel tanks cause a pressure drop that drains the engine, cutting short the mission before Starship can complete its crucial orbital tests. So. A fire suppression system will be added to the compartment above the engine bulkhead. Simply put, this is an automatic fire suppression system installed around the manifold and engine compartment. In previous flights, when methane or oxygen leaks occur, the gas mixture can easily ignite just below the hull. The initial fire may be small, but in an oxygen-rich environment, the extreme heat will spread quickly, igniting pipes, cables, and even leading to an explosion if additional leaks are detected. The fire suppression system acts as a last line of defense, with nozzles or valves spraying inert gas or water as soon as sensors detect a sudden increase in temperature or flames. The purpose is to extinguish the fire on site, preventing it from spreading to other engines or damaging the distribution pipes, seals, and exhaust pipes. Not stopping at the mechanical structure, methane leak sensors will be installed right on the engine cluster allowing the flight system to instantly detect methane concentrations exceeding the threshold and automatically shut down the engine before an explosion occurs. On the basis of these two systems, they serve the need to detect and temporarily resolve risks that occur during the flight of Starship. Fires will be detected promptly and reduce the risk of explosions like those in the past. However, this is not a highlight. Do you remember the engines that moved quickly into Mega Bay 2 a few weeks ago? They may now be completing the installation process on S-37. It will not be simple when these engines are specially designed to solve the exact problems on S-33, S-34, or S-35, and S-36. New Raptor vacuum engines will be installed. This is the most special thing about the S-37. Instead of just adding or reinforcing engine components to solve the overheating problems, it is better to use a completely redesigned engine that runs cooler while still producing more power. This sounds difficult in a short time. There is not enough time to research an optimized engine in just a few months. But don't forget, 
SpaceX already has a new version of the engine that can solve all these problems. Raptor version 3. This is not just a normal Raptor 3 engine, but the Raptor 3 vacuum engine, the most advanced rocket engine ever built. With a thrust of 280 tons per engine, it is a far cry from the 230 tons per engine of the Raptor 2. Raptor 1 took about six years of actual development before it was ready to fly. But soon after, the Raptor 2 was launched, lighter, simpler, and more powerful. Without hesitation, the first version of the Raptor 3 was announced shortly after. In just over two years, a fire-breathing monster with incredible thrust and a more refined design was built, tested, and launched, ready to take the top spot in the world. Currently, the development of the Raptor 3 is progressing at a steady pace and is appearing early on the S-37. To date, Approximately 50 Raptor 3 prototypes have been produced, although this information is not definitive. However, based on SpaceX's operational progress, this is the most accurate estimate of production numbers. The interesting thing about the Raptor 3 is that SpaceX engineers have improved the design and cooling mechanism of the engine to the point that it does not need a heat shield. The simplified Raptor engine incorporates secondary flow paths and adds regenerative cooling to the exposed parts, which is huge. As a result, the Raptor 3 does not need any heat shields, eliminating the weight and complexity of heat shields and fire suppression systems. It is also lighter, has more thrust, and is more efficient than the Raptor 2. It is truly a work of art. The Raptor 3 has eliminated over 1,000 individual parts that can break, rust, or catch fire. The manufacturing method of SpaceX reduces assembly requirements, improves structural integrity, and minimizes material waste, resulting in a more efficient and sustainable manufacturing process. SpaceX also uses the world's most advanced 3D printing technology. Instead of attaching hundreds of separate parts, the engine parts will be assembled into a single piece. Musk has also mentioned this technology, emphasizing its important contribution to its mass production process, saying, indeed, it is not widely understood that SpaceX has the most advanced 3D metal printing technology in the world. Returning to the Raptor vacuum engine, it has a nozzle that is more than twice as large, allowing for a high ISP performance of around 380 seconds, instead of approximately 327 seconds of the sea level version. This is a crucial jump for Ship 37, which needs RVAC to maintain acceleration after leaving the thick atmosphere, ensuring orbital velocity. In addition, the third-generation Raptor vacuum on Ship 37 also promises to solve the problem of thermal cycling that has caused headaches for previous flights. Thanks to that, Ship 37 can demonstrate not only the power, but also the reliability of Raptor vacuum in the scenario of atmospheric re-entry from orbit, a premise for missions to the moon and beyond. Next, Starship will fly again before the end of the summer, if all goes according to plan. Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, aims to launch the 10th test flight of Starship in about three weeks. A comment from Musk updated in mid-July, he said, Launching again in approximately three weeks. The road to the launch pad for Flight 10 has been quite bumpy. However, the problems encountered along the way of Flight 10 have been kept transparent, and solutions have been actively applied. On July 12th, SpaceX officially submitted a new special temporary permission application, to the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, FCC. This application is for the 10th Starship test flight, a project that the space technology community and the public are eagerly following. According to the content of the application, SpaceX said that this flight will be launched from the Starbase complex in Texas, with the requested operating time frame extending from August 4th, 2025 to April 2nd, 2026. The notable point here is that, by setting the starting point for the time frame from August 4th, it means that Starship Test Flight 10 could launch as early as a few weeks from now, if everything goes well. This is a testament to SpaceX's incredibly fast recovery, handling, and adjustment, especially after the problems that Starship 36 encountered earlier. Elon Musk's team doesn't seem to let temporary setbacks slow down their deep space ambitions. Honestly, it is important to understand that the time frame SpaceX submitted to the FCC is not an official launch date, but rather a period of time during which they are requesting permission to conduct communications activities for the flight. 
This means that the test flight could take place at any time during this nearly year-long period, starting on August 4th. Requesting such a wide time frame is quite common in space projects to allow for technical, weather, or legal issues that may arise. Nevertheless, the possibility of Starship 10 taking off early remains a very positive sign. It reflects SpaceX's relentless work ethic, relentless innovation, and willingness to test. More details about the launch date will surely be announced in the coming days, and we have more reason to eagerly await the next performance of the largest ship ever built. The true significance of Starship goes far beyond a simple test launch. It is not just a rocket, but a symbol of a turning point in the history of human space exploration. With a completely reusable design, the superior carrying capacity increases with each prototype. Starship ensures the ability to send dozens of people and cargo into orbit in a single launch. In short, Starship is the key to opening the door to humanity's interplanetary future. Transporting satellites, building lunar bases, or settling on Mars is no longer a big problem. For NASA, the role of Starship is also vital. The human landing system, HLS for the Artemis missions, will be the first attempt to bring humans back to the moon after more than 50 years of absence. Although there are hundreds of lunar exploration vehicles that have been and are being developed globally, is there any vehicle that can compare to Starship? It has long range, a large payload, and maximum economic efficiency. All of this makes Starship an indispensable platform for NASA's long-term goals. Without Starship, those dreams would likely be delayed for decades or forever confined to design files gathering dust in a warehouse. In that context, Flight 10 is not just a technical demonstration, but a major milestone in the journey from a prototype to a real operational system. Each flight provides a treasure trove of data on engine performance, structural strength, thermal performance, and cruise control. Flight 10 is expected to continue testing many new innovations, including concepts that were not tested on Flight 9, from thermal tiles to re-entry stability to booster recovery systems. Step by step, Starship is moving closer to the goal of full reuse, a prerequisite for low-cost, high-efficiency extraterrestrial travel. More broadly, Starship's progress is a testament to the power of public purpose and private innovation working together. As NASA and SpaceX's visions converge on a single platform, Starship, we are witnessing a new era of space exploration, where space is no longer the preserve of governments, but a promised land for all of humanity. The upcoming Flight 10 is more than a countdown. It's a leap into the future. In Starship's wake, we see more than just a ship. We see humanity's destiny ignited.